Hi, I'm Mark Mancini with VRB Outstanding and Vacation Home Mastery. I've been absent for a little bit because I have some exciting news I can't share yet, but I will shortly. This week's episode is going to be all you need to know on how to hire the best property manager. So stay tuned. And welcome back. Now this week, we're gonna talk about property management and how to hire the best property manager. You simply may not have the time or you may be new. And even though you might be using a PMS such as Onares, which automates everything for you, you may not have the contacts and boots on the ground to really manage your property for you. Or maybe just someone who has a very busy, very hectic work schedule and just has to rely on someone else. So we're gonna show you everything you need to know, all the questions you need to ask, okay, to make sure that you get the best person possible to manage your magnificent, VRB outstanding vacation home. Now, you may not necessarily want the biggest property management company, but you do want the best. I'm gonna show you how to find the best, okay? So first and foremost, I want you to do Google search for property managers in the area. And remember, in many states, property managers need to be licensed, okay? Now in South Carolina, it is a requirement that, they're ma that the property managers are licensed, okay? You wanna ensure that whatever property management company you look for, that they're property li properly licensed in the state and they have insurance. In states like Florida, for instance, they don't have to be licensed, but they have to register your property with the state. So there are some things they're gonna have to do. Again, there are some other states as well, they have to be licensed. So make sure when you do Google search, the first question you ask is, are you licensed and insured? But even before that, when you call up these companies, one of the easiest ways to filter out the, the companies is how quickly they respond, okay? If you leave a, vo a voicemail with them and say, I have a home in the area I need property management for, my name is Mark, my phone number is 770-555-1212, and it takes them three or four days to get back to you, that's a concern because your home, even just the average uh, vacation rental, is gonna be bring in $100,000 a year. Now, if their rate is 25%, that's 25,000 a year at least. And we're gonna show you why it's at least where those other fees are gonna come in. So, you always wanna make sure that they're responsive. I mean, this is, this is a sale, right? Imagine if someone were to call you up and book you, want to book your home, and it took you three or four days to get back to them. That, that's a no-brainer. So always make sure you, you want to make sure they're responsive to you, that they're saying, okay, this is someone who wants, me, wants to hire me. I'm going to be responding to them as quickly and as professionally as possible, okay? Now, the second thing I want to talk about, and I'm sorry, but I've got a lot of notes in this. There's a lot I'm going to cover. In fact, this is probably going to be a long episode, so bear with me. Commission is always negotiable. Commission ranges anywhere from 20 to 30%. Anything more than 30% is absolute highway robbery. Anything less than 20% and they're probably a subpar property manager, okay? So the average is 20 to 30, okay? And so what I'm gonna to suggest to you, if a property manager that you're looking at, uh, you know, you don't want to discuss really the commission right up front. You wanna save that more towards the end. But your commission rate you want to talk them down to 20% if you can, okay? Uh, if you can't, 25%, it's not going to kill you the 5%, but just to understand all rates are negotiable, especially this one. I've negotiated every single one of mine down at least 5%. So that's something for you to know right up front. Now, how property managers operate. These bigger, larger property management companies where they have 100 or more homes underneath their purview, in fact, I know of one in Myrtle Beach, they have 11 or 1,200 homes, okay? And there's a couple that have 100, 200 homes. They actually have their own repairman on staff, their own repairman's also a locksmith. He knows how to cut keys and make, make duplicate keys, how to, how to also to break into homes legally if the, the, the key is not available, okay? Uh, the repair guy is also um, gonna be skilled somewhat in AC and how to do some basic repairs there. Uh, the property management company is also going to have more than likely a pool uh, division and a lawn division, okay? And this is how property managers also make more money. And I told you a little earlier 
that they're going to make at least 25 percent because this is where the at least comes in so they'll have let's just say a repairman on staff and they're paying this guy use nice even numbers fifty thousand dollars a year which is roughly about 25 dollars an hour now i suppose he has to go to your house and handle a small repair and he's there for one hour okay they're not going to charge you $25 for that, okay? They're going to charge you the going rate of what a contractor you would call would, would, would pay. So maybe if you would call someone for that repair, they charge $125. Well, they're going to charge $125, but they're paying their guy $25 an hour. That's where they make extra money. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm just telling you behind the scenes, that's what they're doing. Same thing with pool and, and lawn care. So for instance, you may be paying, let's just say $200 a month, nice round numbers I'm using, right? I'm making math easy for everyone. So that's $50 a week, okay? They may be paying that person $25 a week to service your pool. So they're keeping 50% of that profit. The great thing is because it's under that one umbrella, the one phone number, you know, the one property manager handles everything, it makes it easier for you. But that's where they're making their extra money. The same thing with lawn care, okay? Maybe they're charging you $400 a month to cut your lawn, to edge, to blow, etc. They may be paying their person $200 a month to do that, okay? Because they have several homes they're doing in that one day. And if you average out what they pay them per hour, you're probably making 50% margin on that, all right? And that's okay, but understand property managers make a lot of money. They make just as much money from these services as anything else. For instance, um, there's other services uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit later that they're gonna make money off of, uh, but cleaning is another one. They're paying people an hourly rate, but you, if you have a property, you may have hired a cleaner and the cleaner knows that you've got uh, vacation rental, so they're charging you 250. So you're either passing that 250 or going to 275, like I suggest, padding it a little bit. Uh, the 275 to the guest. Again, they're charging the cleaners an hourly rate, or they're paying the cleaners an hourly rate. So really, they're profiting from that as well. So you know, the property management company is making sizable money. That's why the commission's negotiable because they're going to make their money on the other things as well. Now, I talked to you about some other ways they're going to make money. If you're along the coast, hurricane preparedness. If a hurricane's in the area, guess what's going to happen? They're going to send out an email to all the owners. There's a hurricane. Uh, hurricane Sally is coming through the area. Or actually, most recently, it was a Debbie, right? Hurricane Debbie came through the East Coast. And they're going to say, do you want us to, you know, batten down the hatches, basically? You know, you're bringing lawn chairs in, tie things up like your kayaks and paddle boards, your barbecues that are out there, make sure everything is secured, right? And they'll even offer services if it's a really bad storm to put wood on the windows, okay? Again, they're paying their, their service people a certain amount of money, but they're charging you more. Those are extra services, okay? So those are things uh, as well as preventive maintenance. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Who's cleaning your, who's changing your filters? Who's changing your batteries, right? Who's cleaning things out? that uh, needs to be cleaned out on a regular basis for preventive uh, maintenance. So again, those are all things that are gonna creep up on your bill. So that's uh, the thing about larger PMs. The smaller ones, that maybe they're under 50 homes, they probably don't do that, so they're gonna sub everything out, so they're not making that money. They're, they're not gonna add on a, they might add on a five or 10% fee to manage that service call, but uh, they're not gonna do it in the house, so they're not gonna make as much money, so they're gonna be harder to negotiate the commission structure with, okay? Just an idea, so you know the ins and outs of the industry, I'm sharing everything with you guys. Now, here's my list of questions you're gonna ask your property management company that you're looking to hire. Hopefully you've got more than one or two, right? You've got maybe three or more. These are the questions you're gonna ask them, and these are in no discernible order. These are just questions that I put in, in there that uh, I know that are important. And there's more probably I missed, but starting with, okay? Ask them, who is the client? Is it you or is it the guest? Now, technically both are, okay? But the reality is they make more money off of you. You're the recurring guest. As much as they are their host, they don't want to piss off the guest, but at the same time, you are the bread and butter. They should be answering you are our client, you're the one that's important to us. That's how you know that they've got their, their focus straight, that they're gonna manage your company or your home like it's theirs, not just be a company managing it. They're gonna treat it as they would theirs, okay? So always ask that. Um, ask if they're gonna be the same cleaners each and every week, or 
if you have your own that are great, hopefully you do, can they be the cleaners, okay? And give them their contact information. You want to have the same cleaners every week. There's several good reasons for that. I think I mentioned it in my cleaners video. But basically, the cleaners are going to know where everything goes. In case anything's out of place, they can put it back. But also, they'll know if something's missing, okay? Whereas if you have different cleaners each week, they're not going to know. And they're not going to be able to let you know to report something missing or broken. So always get the same cleaners every week. You need to ask them, who does the preventive maintenance and what's the cost? For instance, each year, you're going to want to replace your smoke detectors if you're not using those 10-year smoke detectors I talked about in our smoke detector episode, right? We talked about those where they don't have batteries you replace, but if you still have a battery replacement one, who's going to do that every single year? Even though 9-volt batteries have a 5-year you know, life expectancy on the new ones, the Duracells, I don't trust it. Every fall, I replace the batteries in the smoke detectors. Who's going to replace the batteries in all your remotes every single year? Is that something they even do? Or is that something you're going to have to do? But always replace your, your batteries in all of your remotes every single year. You don't want to ever die on a, on a, on a guest ever, okay? Uh, your air filter. You should be replacing that depending on the, the, the quality of the air filter. Some are 30 days, some are 60, some are 90. The better quality ones go further out. Hopefully your cleaners are doing that. It's very easy to do, and they, you've got a stash in your owner's closet, but are they going to charge you for that? Okay, so find that out. Um, ask them if you can market and book your home outside of them, okay? Be, in other words, be able to be in control of your bookings. I think it's important you should be able to book your home as you need with direct bookings. Uh, I'm not saying necessarily to compete with them on, on VRBO and Airbnb, but at least have a direct booking site and push it through our course, Vacation Home Mastery, where I teach you how to get direct bookings. You should be doing 50% of your bookings direct. And all my secrets will show you how to do that. So if you can book it direct, you save that 20, 25, 30% that they would be charging. Okay. Next, will they take new pictures of your home? And if they do, Will they share them with you? Are you allowed to use them? Who owns them, okay? Every property manager, almost all the time, I'm telling you this is like standard. They're bringing a new client, they call the photographer and they take the pictures. They want the best shots, they know what to get. They want night shots, they want drone shots. Again, we've got a video of how to take the best pictures and where to get the best photographers, two great videos. And that's what they're gonna do from day one is get those pictures. But you wanna be able to use those pictures as well on your direct booking website, or if you cancel that agreement, you've got them to use in the future, okay? So make sure about that. Um, are they getting deposits with every booking? They should be, and if so, how much? You wanna make sure it's appropriate, and is that something that is negotiable that you can talk to them about, okay? To make sure that you're getting suitable um, uh, amounts for, for your deposits, okay? Um, do they have accidental damage protection that they offer you or the guests to, to get so that they're covered? Some, for instance, have their own self-insure accidental damage protection, okay, where they put it into the bill, but they don't pay for the insurance. Uh, they actually just self-fund it. And that's something that you want to make sure that they have that type of coverage. Uh, also, make sure that they're offering travel insurance to all their guests, because that leads to my next question. What is their cancellation policy? Some property managers have a flat um, cancellation policy for all of their properties. Some will have individual cancellation policies for each home and each owner's specific request. Make sure that cancellation policy jives with you. You need to make sure that you're okay with the cancellation policy that they have set up. And, and with mine, you know, I, my first short-term management uh, group, um, property management group, uh, they had it where someone could reserve the property. They, they give first right of refusal for the guest staying that summer for next year for that same week, okay? So if they want to book the same week the following year, all they had to do is put $100 down, okay? And then I think 70% uh, was due January 15th or something like that. But they had from that summer through January to cancel. Now, I was blocking my calendar for those months, okay, until January came. A lot of times January comes and people go, you know what, we changed our mind, we want to choose a different house or go to a different place, or you know what, I'm, I'm sharing this house with Aunt Edna and I don't like Aunt, Aunt Edna anymore. She pissed me off in the last trip. So they cancel it, right? And there were times where they canceled in January and we got it rebooked. 
but now you have to scurry and get it rebooked in January, maybe for a, a March or April or, or, or May booking. And that's just too little time. So I, I prefer, as you know, a no cancellation policy or a minimum of 90 days. Just make sure it works with what you're comfortable with. It's your house. Remember that. Okay. Um, do they make guests sign a rental agreement? They all should. They all really should. There are some that still don't force their guests or require their guests, I should say, to sign a rental agreement. You want that signed rental agreement. It's binding. It'll help in court. But uh, some of them are just kind of wussies about it. And you just kind of have to tell them, I need a signed rental agreement. And in some states, like I said, it is actually required. All right. And in some states, actually, believe it or not, they require photo ID and the names and phone numbers of every single person on the property. And at that point, you probably don't want to deal with that. Let the property manager deal with that. So that's what they're doing, you know, doing for you. They're, they're doing you that service. Another thing you want to find out before you sign up with them is, are you paying the credit card processing fee or are they? They should be eating that fee. And that fee could be 3% to 4%. Um, they shouldn't take it out of your cut, but you need to know that ahead of time because some will. All right. Uh, ask a, to see a copy of their contract before you sign it. Also, don't be afraid to strike through things that you just simply don't agree with or need to amend. Guess what? You can strike through agreements. You don't have to blindly accept everything. And if they say no, maybe you need to look at another property management company because if there's something that you don't like, it's your house, okay? You've got the control, you've got the power, especially if it's a unique house, whether it's a, a large house. Maybe it's got a pickleball court, maybe it's oceanfront like the Oasis, or maybe it's got boat docks like uh, Heart of Marauder, or it's got some kind of special feature that they want, they'll negotiate with you because they wanna have your home on their website and be the proud property management of your amazing VRB outstanding home. Also, you want to find out what are they using for pricing strategy? Some will just basically, they know the area, they know what things should go for, and they get the best they can based on their knowledge. And that works if you really do a lot of properties and you know the market. But that's where something like Price Labs comes into play. Are they using dynamic pricing with Price Labs? And are they marking up the weeks they should be marking up? Okay, July 4th week in a coastal town. Oh my God, you should be charging 20% more. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all should be charging more, okay? And then also to remember, in the southern states, they go back to school early part of August, okay? So June, July, they're booked. Whereas in the uh, northeastern states, for instance, early June, we're still in school, okay? So June, early June is, is the prime uh, rental area for the southern uh, uh, state people live in the southern states. So you want to make sure that June is just as, as high priced as late July. And guess what? August, August is still very, very bookable because people in the north, again, they still, they go from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day is their summer. People in the south, it's a little different. So they have to know the area. And then also too, are there events in the area that you need to mark up for? So for instance, in Myrtle Beach, You've got the, um, uh, was it the Country CC, Country Music Festival, CMF, I don't know, something like that, where they have all these great artists over two or three days in the middle of Myrtle Beach by the Sky Wheel, and it brings in tens of thousands of people. And guess what? Those rates for that week are jacked up, and they need to know that, okay? So, again, they need to be very uh, in tune with the pricing or use something like Price Labs, okay? Another thing you want to ask about is if the agreement is terminated or if you don't want to renew with them and they start taking bookings for the following year, how do you negotiate out or can you negotiate out? So for instance, um, usually contracts are calendar year. Someone in September decided to book July 4th week because that's a hot week, right? Everyone wants to be down the shore for that or at the beach. I'm from New Jersey, so we say down the shore, okay? There's a difference. So uh, maybe... Um, you find another property management company and you, you cancel for the next year, but you still want that booking, okay? They did the work of getting the booking, but they don't have to manage it. So see if you can come to an agreement where you give them half the commission to give you the information. Uh, it may not always work because they want the full commission, but at the same time, that person may want that house, okay? So the last thing that property manager wants to do is lose even half of that commission okay, and having you go to a competitor versus um, taking the chance of, of no, you know, 
we're just going to not give you anything and, and cancel the booking. And then now they go to this other property management company who gets the whole thing and they lost out. They get zero instead of half. OK, so hopefully they're business smart. Talk about that ahead of time, because the reality is you may not be with them forever and you have to have that discussion up front and be honest and open about things. OK. Um, you may have certain rules about your property. Maybe it's not child or kid friendly. Maybe um, uh, you don't want the elevator used or something like that. Can they add those rules to the rental agreement? OK, or is there a way that they can somehow notify the, the guests who book it that, you know, the elevators off limits or because the house and, and the pool isn't kid proof? We don't want anyone under, you know, eight years old, for instance, staying there. OK, so see if they'll do that for you as well. Uh, also, see a copy of their guest contract. See what the guests are signing. You want to know what they're signing to make sure it protects you. You want to know both sides of it. OK, be smart. Read everything ahead of time before you sign anything. Um, another big thing, it's my big pet peeve. Oh, my God, because there is a company in Myrtle Beach, actually, technically. North Myrtle Beach, who's got like 1,400 homes. You probably know who they are because if you do a quick Google search of North Myrtle Beach, you go to one and you'll see like 1,400 homes and condos. Bigger isn't always better. Are they doing annual site uh, inventory and review? In other words, are they going to your house? Are they going on site, making sure you have the proper amount of stemware and, and, and glasses and plates and cookware. Maybe someone took half your pots. Maybe someone broke half your glasses. Maybe they went and you went to the pool table and all your, your pool balls are there except for the eight ball. Maybe you're out of chalk. Maybe you've all broken pool sticks. Maybe you've got a couch that looks like it was pulled out of a frat house from all the beer spilled on it and all kinds of other stuff. Because there is a property management company that I rented a home from in North Myrtle Beach and the home was horrendous, okay? It was horrendous. They had like one wine glass in the place. Now the place sleeps, I think, like 15 people. They had one wine glass. The couch smelled like a, a fraternity uh, couch. And I was in a fraternity, so I know what they smell like. Um, there was also a lot of other things. The cleaners didn't clean the cigarette butts out of the, um, the uh, pot out back where the, where the sand is. People smoke outside. There was just a bunch of, I don't want to say little things. There, there were big things, too. They were just missing a whole lot, and I, and I gave them a list. There was no air filter in the duct, so there was nothing cap capturing all the particles. There's just air being thrown around with dust everywhere. If you looked under the couch, oh, my God, if you saw that. And I really reamed them, okay? And I wasn't being a Karen. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a nice, easygoing guy. But this was like, it was bad. So bigger isn't always better. For them to get to 1,400 homes and do a site analysis probably ain't going to happen. Okay? And that's why bigger isn't always better. But you want to make sure they do an annual site review. Or are they going to have it up to you? And if it's up to you, fine. You just need to know, same time every year, you book the place for a week. What I always tell the owners, sleep in every single bed. Use every single bathroom. Because guess what? Every time people go to um, their vacation rentals, they use the same bedroom, they use the same bathroom. And guess what? They don't realize that when you go to the, the guest house or one of the, the guest rooms and they go to sit down on the toilet, something's off. Or they use a shower and like, really? This is what guests experience? Or they use a bed and they're like, what was I thinking? Or why didn't they fix this, etc. So the only way you're going to find those things out is to use every single one of your beds, use every single one of your toilets, use every single one of your showers, okay? And if you're like us where you've got two homes and you've got uh, two kitchens, use each of your kitchens, okay? Use your grill. Make sure that you're, 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 everything's working, okay? Make sure all your ACs are working, okay? Every year you have to do that. Now we come down to the Oasis a couple times a year. We're always on top of those things, but that's something, again, you're probably already know how to do and you're probably already doing, but again, not everyone sleeps in a different bed every time they go there. So that's something I always want to make sure that you do. Um, I've had rental companies who wanted your business to guarantee a certain number of weeks per year of bookings in order to get your business, okay? Now, in some areas, there's a certain number of weeks that's better than others. So, for instance, in Myrtle Beach, uh, 20 weeks is considered average or good. 25 is great. If you're doing 30 or more, Oh my God, and I don't mean snowbirds. I mean, if you're booking short-term rentals weekly, 35 weeks or more in the Myrtle Beach area, you're knocking it out of the park. And that's what I was doing in Myrtle's Inlet, okay? 35 plus per year. Now, 
Maybe you're new, maybe you want to try a new property management company. They might say, well, Mark, we'll guarantee you 25 weeks a year, and if we don't, uh, we'll give you half the commissions back that you paid us, uh, something like that. Uh, they, they'll work options like that. Just be careful, though, because to get those bookings, they may have to lower the price of your weekly rate. If you think about it, do you want to have, again, I'll use round numbers because we want to be math friendly. Do you want 25 weeks at $10,000, okay, which would get you $250,000? Or do you want 20 weeks at $15,000? No, I'm sorry, $12,000, right? So 20 weeks at $12,000 is 240 versus 25 at 10,000, which is uh, 250,000. So there's a difference there of $10,000. Many of you are gonna say, well, I want the 250, I want, the, I want that $10,000 more. You really don't, okay? Because those five weeks for $10,000, number one, it's probably gonna beat your house up more. I'd rather get a little bit less money and have less people in the home, but number two, uh, especially if it's prime season in the summer, you've got a week off, you get to use it as well. And that may be the time that not only do you get to do the work on the property, but you get to enjoy your property, okay? So don't be excited about booking it all the time for a lower rate. I'd rather have the property used less and not destroy it as much because every time you have a guest in, stuff's gonna break. It's just a reality of this industry, as you know. Um, next thing I wanna talk about real quick, um, and this is going to be really basic. So if your home, it's just like a simple $100,000 a year home. Maybe it's a three bedroom, two bath, four bedroom, three bath, something like that, where you're getting $100,000 a year in, uh, in rent. Remember that property management company is probably getting about $25,000, but with ancillary services, they're profiting probably another, you know, 10,000 more. So they're making about $35,000 a year off you. So again, it's okay to hire one when you first get started and start learning the business because you don't know air conditioning repairmen, you don't know plumbers, you don't know electricians. You may not have a good way of busting up a party, but as you learn it, maybe you fire them and go off on your own. But if you do, always get something like Oneres so you can market your property, okay? And that's gonna be our next episode that I'm totally excited about. It's gonna be an episode on cart abandonment and also on drip marketing. Now, that's going to go hand in hand with our course, Vacation Home Mastery, where you have your direct booking site and you drive business to it. I'm going to show you how with all the ins and outs in next week's on cart abandonment and, and, and drip marketing. If you don't know what cart abandonment is, that's when people go to your direct book website, they start filling it out, and then they get cold feet or something and they bail out. But a good PMS like owner as will let you know a cart was abandoned. How do you go ahead and reach out and get that booking? All right. So again, that's Vacation Home Mastery. It's going to set the really the groundwork for that. And next week's episode, we're going to go into that hard and heavy. It's going to get in, you're going to get a lot more bookings. You're you're going to go from maybe five or six bookings a year direct to 15 to 20 direct, just like we do. So thanks again for joining us in Vacation Home Mastery and VRB Outstanding. I want you to click like, subscribe, comment, questions, anything below, and we'll see you again next week.